My name is Jungle Jamie, and welcome to Talk Mountain's Sanctuary Storytime. Today's program is A Nest is Noisy, and I'm so happy you're here. If you're happy too, shake your tail feathers. At Hawk Mountain, we love nature. We love the birds, especially the raptors. We love the plants. We love all wildlife because all living things are connected. If you love nature too, then move around like your favorite animal. Awesome, thank you so much for joining us today. I am so excited that you are here. Today, we are going to learn about the magical and mysterious world of nests. First, we're gonna learn about what types of animals make and use nests. And then we are going to read an awesome book, A Nest is Noisy. And then we are going to look at some real nests and try to guess what creatures made them. And we're going to do this with a very special guest. And her name is Rich Top Rachel. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks, Rich Top Rachel. And then at the end of the program, we are going to meet a real live animal that actually uses nests. It's going to be very exciting. Okay, first, what animals make nests? Do you think all animals make nests? No, some do and some don't. But why do some animals make nests? Well, they make nests to have a place where they can have their babies and raise their young. And that's what a nest is all about. So we're gonna play a game to see how well you know what animals make and use nests. So I'm gonna hold up an animal, and if you think that animal makes or uses a nest, you're gonna give two big thumbs up. And if you think it doesn't make or use a nest, we're gonna do thumbs down, okay? All right, first we have a deer. What do you think? Make a nest? No, thumbs down, thumbs down. What about, squeak, 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 a little mouse. What do you think? Thumbs up. A mouse does make a nest to have its babies. And here's a picture of a little mouse nest. So cute. What about something that makes honey and goes bzzz, bzzz. Does a bumblebee or a honeybee make a nest? What do you think? Thumbs up. It sure does. It sure does. What about a bird like a cardinal? What do you think? Nest? Yep. Yep. What about a sloth? Well, sloths live in trees, but they don't make nests. Nope. No nest for the sloth. What about a bunny rabbit? Yes. Bunny rabbits have their babies in a little nest. What about a giraffe? Can you imagine a giraffe in a nest? I don't think so. Thumbs down. What about, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. What about an alligator, an American alligator? What do you think? Thumbs up, an alligator actually makes a nest for its babies, amazing. What about, what about a fish? Well, not all fish, but some fish do make a nest. And here is a picture of a fish making a nest where it's going to lay its eggs. Wow, what about a sheep? Bah! What do you think? No, what about a sea turtle? What do you think? Yes, thumbs up. What about an owl? Yes, thumbs up. What about an insect like an ant? Well, some insects make nests and others don't. So we're, just, we're gonna learn more about that. So good job, I hope everyone liked that game. But there's, wait, there's another group of animals I wanna ask you about. What about the great apes like an orangutan or a gorilla? What do you think? Do you think they make nests or a chimpanzee? Well, thumbs up, they do. And guess what? One time I was lucky enough to go all the way to Africa 
to study gorillas and chimpanzees and I saw their nests in the rainforest of Cameroon in Africa and I took some pictures of them and I would like to share them with you. Okay, look at this picture. Can you spot the nest? Here it is. And who made that nest? A chimpanzee. A chimpanzee made that nest in the tree. And here's a closer look. So every night a chimpanzee makes a new nest to sleep in. They take branches and fold them um, under each other and put all these leaves to be nice and comfortable. And scientists go out into the forest and they count all the different nests they can find in the trees. And that's how they try to figure out how many chimps live in an area of the forest because each chimp makes its own nest and makes a new nest every night. So here's another picture of a nest I took in Africa, in Cameroon. But wait a minute, this nest isn't in a tree, it's on the ground. Well, that's because, can you see it right here? This is the nest of a gorilla. Gorillas don't make their nests in trees, they make their nests on the ground. And it has all these uh, leaves piled up. And you know what my friends on our science team are doing here? They're looking for hairs, for gorilla hairs to collect and take back to the lab so they can study the hairs. Um, so I hope you enjoyed seeing those pictures of the chimpanzee and the gorilla nest. So do you think that all nests look the same? We know so many different types of animal makes nests. Do you think they're using the same materials to make their nests? Well, actually many nests are different. Nests can be different shapes, different sizes, or even different colors. When animals make their nests, they use the materials that they can find in their habitat. Some animals make their nests out of twigs and sticks and leaves. Some animals make their nests out of mud or spit. Some animals make their nests out of spider webs. And I even heard of an animal that lives in the water that makes its nest by blowing air bubbles. Isn't that cool? All right. I think we're ready to learn more about nests by reading this book that I love. It's called A Nest is Noisy. All right, here we go. Okay, wow, look at that. It looks like a thick nest right there. Look at all these different types of nests. We're going to learn about so many different types of animals make nests. And look how they're all different, made of different materials. A nest is noisy. It is a nursery of chirp chirping. And here we have a nest of a little tiny hummingbird. Look at that tiny little nest. A nest is noisy. It's chirp chirp chirping. A nest is noisy. It's buzzing. It's squeaking and it's peep peeping. So here we have the nest of a honeybee. And here we have the nest of an alligator. And here, look, this is a fox squirrel nest. And actually I have a real picture of a squirrel nest. You might see this in a tree. It looks like a big clump of leaves. And here, look at this. This is a little fish, and the fish is called a gourami fish. And the parents blow bubbles in the water. They blow air bubbles, and they make a nest out of bubbles for their babies. Wow. A nest is welcoming. Many birds assemble a cradle for their eggs, knitting together leaves and twigs and softening it with grass, hair, moss, fluffy seeds, leaf skeletons, or even a snake's old skin. Can you see the snake skin? Wow. They might also add candy wrappers, plastic bags, and bits of cloth or paper. Birds are not the only animals that make nests. Orangutans climb high into the rainforest canopy where each day they braid a new bed of strong branches and line it with a mattress of leaves and twigs. 
on rainy nights, a woven umbrella of leaves keeps them dry. And here in this picture, this is the nest of a blue jay. A nest is enormous, like this really big, enormous nest of the dusky scrub fowl bird. Or a nest can be so teeny tiny, like this little hummingbird nest. One of the largest bird's nests is the dusky scrub fowl. Whoa! Their mounded nests are made of decomposing leaves and twigs and can measure more than 36 feet in diameter and nearly 16 feet high. That's huge! The smallest bird's nest, the bee hummingbird, is the size of a golf ball. It has moss, lichen, bark, and leaves, usually wrapped in spider silk. The stretchy spider webbing, or the spider silk, lets the next nest expand as the babies grow bigger. Wow. A nest is spiky like a cactus. A nest is papery. A nest is pebbly. Nests can be made of so many different things. Elf owls, here are the tiny little elf owls. Elf owls and cactus wrens select a prickly nesting place as a refuge from slithering snakes and other hungry hunters. So the spikes on the cactus protect the birds nesting in the cactus from other predators that might want to eat them for lunch. So there's the cactus wren. And now we're going to talk about the papery nests. Hornets, yellow jackets, and paper wasps scrape fibers from weathered wood and chew it until it's a moist paste that dries into a tough paper-like material. The bald-faced hornet queen makes a cell for each egg. Wow, look at that hornet. Now we're going to talk about nests that are made of pebbles. You like lampreys, which is a type of fish, use their suction cup mouths to move stones the size of peas, walnuts, and even baseballs and create depressions called reds in shallow stream beds. They lay their eggs in the reds and cover them with more pebbles to hide them. There you can see the, the lamprey fish, almost looks like an eel. So they wanna hide their eggs and have them camouflage and blend in so they're safe from other predators. A nest can even be bubbly. Can you imagine being in a nest of bubbles? African gray tree frogs make a foamy nest. And there's the African gray tree frog, and there's his foamy nest. They make a foamy nest for their eggs in branches overhanging water. With their hind legs, the female churns a substance secreted from her body into a frothy mass that in sunlight hardens into a crust. A few days after the tadpoles hatch, the nest crumbles and disintegrates, and the tadpoles drop into the water where they can feed and develop into frogs. So can you see the tadpoles that drop from the eggs? Okay. From the nest, I mean, wow. And here is the fish, the gourami fish, that makes a nest of bubbles. Gourami blow bubbles that pack together to form a nest that floats like a raft in the still water. Under the bubble nest, the male and female spawn, producing eggs. Once the female has released her eggs, she swims away, while the male carries the eggs in his mouth and places them up in the nest. After they hatch, the baby fish, which are called fry, swim beneath the gooey bubble nest, where they are guarded by the male until they are ready to strike out on their own. Wow.
A nest is hot. Okay. Wow. Here we have the nest of an oven bird up here. And here we have the nest of the American alligator. So these nests are hot. Some South American oven birds forge an adobe oven made with thousands of mud and clay pellets. Baked in the sun, the nest is a cozy place for their eggs. An alligator piles decaying plants and mud to create a mat. In the center of the mat, she digs a hole where she lays her eggs. And then with her forelimbs and her jaws, she covers the nest with more plants to keep them warm until they hatch as squeaking baby alligators. The temperature of the nest determines if the baby alligators will hatch as a boy or a girl. Wow. A nest is hidden. Here we have the hidden nest of a sea turtle and also a platypus. Wow. Okay. A nest is hidden. And by the way, this is a Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. In spring and summer, tens of thousands of female Kemp's Ridley sea turtles ride the waves together onto the Gulf Coast beaches and drag themselves up to the sand dunes. They use their hind flippers like shovels to dig a pit in the sand. After the turtle deposits her round leathery eggs, she tamps down the soil with the underside of her shell and flings more sand over the nest to hide any signs of it. So her nest, the sea turtle nest, is buried underneath the sand. Wow. Now we're gonna learn about the platypus. Have you seen a platypus before? They live in Australia. The platypus, one of only two mammals, animals with fur, that lay eggs. They hollow out tunnels or burrows along stream beds. With her tail, the female platypus carries moist plant matter deep into the tunnel to make a nest and lays soft-shelled eggs the size of marbles. She adds plugs of soil in the tunnel to protect the eggs from rising waters, predators, and changing temperatures. A nest is neighborly. Look at all these nests together. There's several different birds of the same species all making nests together. And also, these look like prairie dogs. Look at that. Okay, and this bird, this pretty bird is called a weaver bird. It's actually a bioweaver. A nest is neighborly. There is safety in numbers. Some nest builders live in colonies or groups where there are more ears and eyes to raise an alarm when predators, animals that eat other animals, are near. Bioweavers, bioweavers build nests that hang from thorny trees or palm fronds like upside down bottles. They also look like baskets. They swing in the air from a woven tube each nest is protected from lizards, snakes, and bigger birds. In towns of hundreds of inhabitants, black-tailed prairie dogs make grass-lined nesting chambers with a maze of burrows. When a predator is spotted, the prairie dogs bark to warn their neighbors that danger is near. Would you like to live in a nest with lots of other neighbors around in other nests? The weaver birds do, and so do the prairie dogs. A nest is peculiar. Army ants make living nests called bivacas, clinging to one another's legs and jaws. They form a writhing, moving ball of millions of ants, suspended from a branch by a chain of more ants. Inside are chambers for the queen, a brood of eggs, newly hatched larvae and food. Whoa, look at that nest of living ants. It's a living nest, all these ants. 
are all kind of holding on to each other. These are cave swiftlets. And they make their nests in an unusual way. Cave swiftlets make a nest made entirely of their saliva or their spit. Swinging its head from side to side, the male spits long pearly strands onto the wall of a cave that harden into a lacy bowl when exposed to air. Bird's nest soup made from swiftlet nests is among the most expensive foods eaten by humans. People actually eat these nests that's made of this bird spit. The cave swiftlet. A nest is muddy. Oh my gosh, it looks like these flamingos are making nests of mud. Flamingos make a heap of mud, grass, and stones up to 12 inches tall and then lay a single egg in a depression at the top. The height of this big nest mound protects the egg from changing water levels and, and the hot ground. Both parents feed their hatchlings milk from their crop, which is um, part of their digestive system. It's a little storage bag where they can store their, uh, some food. Um, and they feed the, the parent flamingos feed the babies milk from their crop until the babies are old enough to leave the nest. A nest is adopted. Some creatures choose nests made by others to brood their offspring. Cowbirds and common cuckoos lay their eggs in nests of other birds, where they are hatched and raised by the mother of a different species. And here we have um, a buff-breasted paradise kingfisher, and they actually lay their eggs in a termite mound. They, they fly really fast into the termite mound to make a hole in the mound with their beak. And that's where they lay their eggs. That's their nest. Lots of food in there for the babies, all those termites. A nest is noisy. There is buzzing, swishing, swishing, rustling, flapping, and humming with babies but only until they are ready to fly, swim, or crawl away. And then, after the babies crawl away, a nest is quiet. Wow, did you like that book? I hope you did. I certainly enjoyed reading it to you. And now, I'm wondering if my friend Ridgetop Rachel has seen any nests lately. Hi, Jamie. That was incredible. And yes, I absolutely have seen many nests. And I would love to share some of these nests. And we can try to guess what kind of animal made them. Well, the first nest, hmm, I hope you can see that one side. is round and the other side is straight and I'm touching it and I can feel that it's very hard. In fact, this nest was made with clay and mud that dried. So it's very hard like a brick and it was actually hanging off a side of a building and it fell. Hmm. Well, if you're thinking that it's a bird, you'd be correct. Swallows, that's a bird, they make nests just like this one. It's very hard. Well, what about ah, this nest? I found this on the ground. It had fallen from a tree. I'm feeling it. It's very papery. And although from far away it looks gray, just one color, up close it has many different shades of tan, 
can you see different colors? Do you see gray, maybe some white, even little black specks? Who made this nest? Hmm, it was made by a wasp. Wow, remember when Jamie told us about the spit or saliva? <gasps> well, the next nest I found, oh, it has so many different materials. In fact, some of those materials are falling. It had fallen out of a tree. I see moss. What do you see? Hmm. Do you see leaves and some grasses? Who made this nest? I think it was a bird called a Carolina wren. Well, the next nest was really hard to see. Once I found it on the ground, I started finding lots of them when I looked at in the tall grasses and reeds. It's really hard, almost like a seed or a shell. Then I saw tiny, tiny animals nearby crawling. What animal do you think made this nest? It's like a little case and it has little layers. Believe it or not, this is a nest or home made by a praying mantis. That's right, a large insect. Hmm. Well, the final nest I'd like to show you was also found on the ground after a windstorm. And it was made just hanging in the inside of these branches. And it's just suspended by these branches. Hmm, I see some hair. Do you see grass? Hmm, lots of plant material. What do you think made this nest? I think it was made by a bird. Oh, well, Miss Jamie, I'd love to keep learning about different nests with you and our incredible curious audience. And I'd like to share some photos and let's look at different material. Oh my goodness. Let's notice some shapes and sizes. The first nest is a tiny nest. In fact, I think it was the first nest in the book. A nest is noisy. Can we make a, a little cup with our hands? Just cup your palm and curl up those fingers. Do you know that some hummingbird nests are even smaller than the smallest palm, cupped palm like this? They're so tiny. And what we see that's green is lichen. And hummingbirds use spider webs so the nest, that little cupped nest expands and gets bigger as the babies grow. So that's a tiny nest. <gasps> the next nest is the nest of our national symbol, the bald eagle, a raptor. Can we look at this nest? What's it made out of? Well, it's made of sticks and tree branches. And I learned that bald eagles go to the same nest and every single year they add new nesting material like big sticks and branches. I even learned 
that some bald eagle nests are so large that we human beings, even a tall adult human being, can fit inside that bald eagle nest and stand, actually stand up. That's really, really, really big. Wow. Well, the next nest, gee, this is an oven bird. And oven birds make their nests on the floor, right on the ground, either in the forest, like at Hawk Mountain, we even have oven birds. Wow, masters of camouflage. It really blends in. The next nest, it's hanging like a basket. And let's look at those materials. They look like it's made of grass. That weaver bird wove that nest. I think it looks like a pinata. Wow. Oh my, oh, wait a minute. Where's the bird? Where's the nest? Look carefully. If you live around a farm or a field, you might be able to see a secret nest of a short-eared owl. These are farmland raptors, and they don't build their own nest. They just lay their eggs in an impression right on the grass in a field. Oh my goodness. If you live near a desert and you remember the elf owl in the book that Jamie just read, we know that some birds live inside cacti. So this is a woodpecker that's hidden. And again, it's safe from predators because cacti, they're prickly and sharp. Wow. Oh, wait a minute. Let's take a look at this photo. I don't see a nest, but guess what? This is an area where a black vulture made a nest. It's called a scrape. It just finds a place either in a cave or tucked away in an old abandoned building and they lay their eggs right there. Isn't that amazing? A scrape. Can you say that word scrape? Sometimes I think scrapes are bad when you might fall and scrape your knee. This is the good kind of scrape. That's a nest that vultures, like black vultures, make. That's amazing. <gasps> Whoa! Here's an example of a human-created nest box. If we take a look at that box, you can see a tiny falcon. In fact, it's an American kestrel, the smallest falcon in North America. Oh my goodness. And there are many other birds. I'm thinking of the blue bird that they will move in to nests that are built by people. We can build our own or even adopt a nest box. You can even help kestrels at Hawk Mountain Sanctuary that our scientists are studying. You can even adopt a nest box. Oh, I'm sure there are eggs, maybe even baby kestrels inside that box. Wow, oh, what's next? Oh my goodness. Can we take a look at what is this little bird doing? It's adding nesting material like twigs into the pocket of a piece, piece of clothing that's hanging on someone's wash line. Oh my goodness. So that nest is tucked away inside a pocket. Mm. Oh my goodness, who is ready to play the matching game? This is like love connection, but we're going to guess that nest. Now, you can follow along at home if 
you received an email, and maybe you printed it out, you can follow along by connecting the bird to its nest. So let's follow along. Now, because I love birds and I like learning about their nests, what they do, where they live, what they eat. I also love to learn about hmm, different kinds of birds. Can we look at this matching game all the way at the bottom? There's a bird called the burrowing owl. It doesn't live in Pennsylvania, but I know a scientist who's studying them in Florida. The burrowing owl makes a burrow. Oh my goodness. So we're gonna look on the other side of the paper and let's try to find the match. Hmm, all the way at the top, I see what looks like grass at the top where someone, we could even walk, but below the ground, that looks like a burrow. Hmm. Guess what? Time to make a match. So the very bottom bird is matched all the way to the tippy, tippy top nest. Wow, a burrowing owl. Hmm. Well, let's look, let's find the largest nest. I see the nest all the way at the bottom. That looks pretty big. And it actually reminds me of the bald eagle nest. It has large sticks. Well, the osprey, some people call that the fishing eagle. And the osprey, they eat fish. They make their nest by water. If you live near a lake or a river or the ocean, you might have seen the osprey make a huge nest. So let's connect the osprey with that big stick nest all the way at the bottom. Oh my goodness, that one looks like it was built on a platform. Gee, now it's getting tough. Only three birds to go. Well, how about that weaver bird in the middle? Remember, weaver birds, they weave. They take grasses and they make a little basket that hangs. And I'm going to look on the nest side and I'm going to find, hmm, look for a nest that looks like a pinata hanging. Well, let's draw and connect the weaver bird to the nest that's hanging in the middle. Oh my goodness, only two birds to go, only two nests to go. Well, do you see a nest box, a box that was made by a human being to help cavity nesters, like an American kestrel or an Eastern bluebird? So let's find the eastern bluebird. It's between the weaver bird and the burrowing owl. And let's draw a line to connect the eastern bluebird to the box. Do, 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 do. Grand finale. Red-winged blackbird. That bird all the way at the top of your paper. It has a beautiful song. The male has a beautiful song. And when I hear it in Pennsylvania at Hawk Mountain, I know oh, summer's coming, winter is over, it's spring. And I learned that red-winged blackbirds, they like to make their nests low to the ground in tall grasses or reeds and marshy areas. So let's do it. You know what to do. Let's match, connect. You can draw a line. You can use your finger. You can shout out loud. Yes, the red-winged blackbird would make that nest above that big, large osprey nest. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nest lovers, thank you so, so very much for playing the matching game.
And I'd like to encourage you to go outside, even look around your house or apartment building, wherever you live, your neighborhood, and look for nests. Remember, we don't want to disturb nature. We want to be respectful to these nest builders. But I'm sure you can find some nests, either of birds or other animals. Hmm. Who wants to get crafty? Well, channel your your inner nest builder you can do that by simply reusing a paper plate that's what i did and i just turned the paper plate around you can use crayons markers paint colored pencils you can draw your own bird and you can go outside and collect materials Guess what? I already had a paper plate and I didn't buy, I didn't go to a store. We had everything right outside my yard, right outside my door. And I had all the art supplies. I used some tape and some glue and I made a little nest. <gasps> and don't you agree? Nests are the best and so are you. And I'll wrap this up by showing you that I really did get crafty. So you can get creative too and channel your inner nest builder. In fact, what kind of bird would you want to be? Maybe you want to invent your brand new type of animal and discover what kind of nest would you want to build? Would you want to live in a burrow high in the treetops, low in the marshy reeds like a red-winged blackbird? So I used some lichen and some pine needles and I even found a feather outside. But guess what? I also found this ah, snake skin. Oh my goodness. And finally, ah, I decided to cut my paper plate in half and I made two, that's right, double chicks. And I colored, I used some markers. You can see some brown. I added some grasses and I used a green marker to represent some lichen or moss. So boys and girls, thank you so much. Jamie, hey, I understand. That was so amazing. Oh, thank you so much for teaching us. Thank more. you. And I love your nest artwork that you made. So thank you. Also kids, I want to let you know that we did email everyone this really cool coloring page of the bald eagle nest with the little baby eagles. So you're welcome to print that out if you can and color it. So we're at the final portion of our program where you get to meet a real live creature that uses a nest to raise its young. Let's see, he's coming. And here he is. This is Briscoe and Briscoe is a parrot. He is a blue fronted Amazon. And if you can see the bright blue um, turquoise feathers above his beak, that's how he got his name, the blue fronted Amazon. So Briscoe's not a wild parrot. He's a pet. He lives with me. But the Amazon parrots do live in the wild in the rainforest of South America, especially in the Amazon rainforest, the largest rainforest in the world. And guess what? They use nests to lay their eggs and raise their young. But the Amazon parrots don't build a nest in the tree branches. Instead, they look for a hole in the trunk of a tree, or we could call that a cavity. And sometimes another animal has already made that hole as its nest, but the Amazon parrot will come and take it over and use it for its own. So they'll go inside that hole in the tree and lay their eggs. And they will do that around August to September. And they'll usually lay about two to three eggs. And let's see, they'll sit, the mom will sit on the eggs for 30 days until the eggs hatch. And then once the little baby 
Amazon parrots hatch, both parents will take turns feeding um, the babies and they're gonna feed them food that they've already eaten and then they're going to regurgitate or throw up the food they already ate to their babies. And what types of food would they eat? Well, Briscoe, what do you like to eat? Oh, let's see, fruits, nuts, seeds, leaves, and even flowers. So that's what they parents eat and that's what they feed their babies. And after nine weeks, the baby Amazon parrots are all grown up and they're ready to fly off and leave their nest, their nest hole in the tree. Well, I hope you enjoyed meeting Briscoe and he enjoyed meeting you. Isn't that right? Look at his beautiful colors. Look at the greens, the purples, and the reds. All right. So I hope everyone enjoyed learning about nests. And we hope that you are going to go outside in your neighborhood, in your backyard, when you're on a walk and take a look around you and see if you can spy any nests. Cause it's spring, it's that time of year where animals are raising their babies and there's lots of nests around. But remember, look with your eyes and you never wanna touch a nest. We don't wanna disturb wildlife. So thank you so much for joining us. Our next Sanctuary Storytime is going to be on Thursday. June 11th at 11 o'clock in the morning, and we are going to read the book, Percy, the Victorious Vulture. And remember, we have Sanctuary Storytime the second and fourth Thursday of every month at 11 in the morning. Thanks so much for joining us, and have a great day. Bye!